thanks for watching this new video. This is the second part of the conditional access. So on the first video, I explained how to access a web application with conditional access for device posture check from Intune. Okay, so I have a Windows 10. I want this device compliant before granting an access to a web application. In this video, I will present the same use case, but for SSL VPN. So for the SSL VPN, it's a little bit different, okay? Because we have to use a client, the F5 access client. So let's have a look on the flow, on the workflow to understand the different step needed in a, before granting an access to an SSL VPN gateway. So first of all, I have a user, okay? A user with different authentication factor, okay, first factor, second factor. In my case, it will be username, password, plus an MFA from the, the Microsoft Authenticator application, a push notification. I have a laptop, enroll, okay, enroll in Intune, and this device at the moment is compliant, and we will check why the device is compliant. And on the right side, here we have an APM, an SSL VPN gateway. And I, I only want to grant access, to open access to the internal resources if the device is compliant, if the user pass the two-factor authentication. So first of all, every X minutes, there is an asynchronous communication between my Windows 10 device and Intune. Okay, so Windows 10 every time send notification to, uh, to Intune to tell I'm compliant, I'm not compliant. This is my status at the moment. My firewall is enabled, my firewall is disabled. In my demo, the compliance is based on firewall enabled or not. This is my conditional access policy and the compliance policy. Okay, so this is asynchronous, it's on the side. When the, when the user wants to authenticate uh, against Azure AD and wants to connect the F5 access client to the APM, SSL gateway, the user will be prompt against Azure AD. Okay, so Azure AD represents a login page for username, a login page for password, and an MFA if I want. Okay, if I have a conditional access who tells I want uh, a second factor authentication and I want a device compliant, the Azure AD will make this control. Okay, so the user will authenticate against Azure AD with one factor, second factor. And if the device is compliant and only the device is compliant, the, the device will reserve, uh, it will be a kind of push from Azure AD to the Windows 10, will reserve a user certificate, but temporary user certificate. The time life of this certificate is 60 minutes, six zero, one hour. And this certificate will be used to authenticate against the SSL VPN gateway. So APM is not aware of any compliancy. Okay, so APM is not doing compliancy check. APM realize 100% to Azure AD and the F5 access client has the framework to use in order to provide the right information to Azure AD and to get this certificate. So. The first factor authentication is username and password. The second can be an MFA, an SMS, something that Azure AD supports. And the outcome is a certificate, okay? So the device reserves a certificate for one hour. And this certificate can be used during one hour to authenticate against the gateway. So let's do the demo now. First of all, you need an Intune, okay? So here, I have an Intune account. And my device, as you can see here, is compliant, okay? So the firewall is enabled. This is my compliancy policy. It's just firewall enabled, that's it. Then I have a user. The user is mfa at emea.f5ac.com. And I already enroll my mobile phone with the Microsoft Authenticator application. So now, what I have to do?
on the compliancy, okay, so on, on the conditional access, I created a conditional access policy. And as you can see here, I have only one, one access control with two controls, MFA, device compliant, and all the selected control need to be need to pass. Okay. Second thing, compliance policy. Okay, so you can see this is my compliance policy. If I have a look on it, it's firewall require. Okay, this is my compliance. So on one side I have the MFA, on the other side I have the compliance. And then what I did, I created a, a SSL VPN profile. Okay, so Intune sent an F5 access configuration file into their five access client in Windows 10. To do so, I follow the I follow the the guide, okay, the documentation, and I created a custom a custom profile in order to support this authentication with certificate authentication from from Microsoft. So, if I go to configuration profile, this is how I created my profile. The first thing, of course, you select a platform, a type VPN, you define your endpoint. This is my endpoint, vpn.emea.f5c.com. Okay, this is the endpoint. This is my virtual server. And then I had to select several things. The first one, of course, is uh, the connection type, F5 access, always on disable for my demo. Authentication, it doesn't matter because I created a custom XML file. And as you can see, from from credential false, debug for the log if I want, and then authentication based on the client authentication, and the root CA, the CA that signs the certificate is the Microsoft VPN root CA Gen 1. This is the one that Intune used to generate this temporary certificate. Then the trick is here, conditional access for this VPN connection. This is the, the settings to enable in order to get this certificate, okay? If you don't enable these, there is no concept of certificate, so they will never receive the certificate from Intune. That's it, okay, this is what I did. Then my F5 access received this configuration, and now let's do the demo. So, here we are. This is my Windows 10 machine. This machine uh, is compliant, okay, we check already. So I can force compliancy check if I click on account. In account, I go to my access work in school. I click on my, on my account. In info, information, I can force a thing, okay? So if I disable my, my firewall and I want to do the demo, I check here and I force a thing. So at the moment, it's compliant. So far, so good. Now let's go to the VPN, okay? So I can either click here, okay, and select my VPN, or I can directly uh, go to the VPN menu. So you can see the configuration is here. You cannot edit the configuration from, from the F5 access client. If I go there, the only settings I have is a name and that's it. Uh, so I clean it up, the environment. So I use a PowerShell command here, as you can see, in order to delete all the tokens from Azure just to be sure that we will be prone for the username, for the password, for the MFA. But as you can see, we are the January 4th. Uh, I, I didn't authenticate it today uh, for the SSL VPN in order to be sure that we will get the certificate during the demo. Okay, so as you can see, I did a test on the 28th of December. I authenticated with the F5 access and I, I was compliant, so I reserved this certificate, temporary certificate. So let's do it, okay? So I will connect, you will see different steps, and I should be connected at the end to the big IP APM. So let's click on connect. Okay, so you can see here, this is a pop-up uh, telling me, please authenticate against Azure AD. So this is a, a cookie 
okay, to I can use or reuse MFA, but this is just the name. I'm not logged on or logged in. So I select MFA, this is my account. It asks me for a password. I love mama, dollar. I sign in. First factor. Then here you can see second factor authentication. So on my phone, I have to approve the notification. Yes, approve. Okay. So far, so go face ID. Try face ID again. Perfect. So, as you can see here, verifying your signing information. This is where the, the Windows 10 communicate with Intune and as ID and say, okay, are you compliant? Yes, you are compliant. Please give to me a temporary certificate, user certificate. So now here, so first of all, I'm connected. But here, if I refresh my store, certificate store, have a certificate, as you can see from today, valid for one hour, for 60 minutes, more or less. Okay, have a look. Valid from 829, valid to 934. Okay, you see it's 834 to 934. So now I have, I have a certificate. So this is a trick to enable SSL VPN with conditional access and as ready and in tune. Okay, so now I'm connected. If I'm disconnected, I can reconnect because my certificate is still valid. If I'm dis if I am disconnected after two hours, because as long as the session is up, there is not no check. Okay, but if I'm disconnected after two hours, the certificate will be wrong. So by design, by default, the file access will request a new certificate. We present the new uh, device compliancy, and we get a new certificate, and you will be connected. This is how it works. I hope you enjoy this demo and see you soon for the next demo.